Well, here we are at the airport. <laughs> We're fixing to get into the beaver. <laughs> And anyway, the lake is the lake is super rough here, so it's probably going to be a rough ride. But we're tired of waiting; we're ready to go. Just like that, that's it. We're alone on Mexican hat, Woodland Caribou. Ready? Ready. What? Oh shit. Well, we got our campsite on Mexican Hat set up. This is our first night in Woodland Caribou. And we had a really good ride on the Beaver as we flew in. That sure was an adventure in itself. So it came a little rain on us just as we got here. So we threw up a, a tarp over the tent to kind of help out a little bit. And anyway, got a, uh, got a fire down here and uh, Marsha's fixing dinner here. Oh, I think she's using a gas stove, but we're going to use it sometimes. But it's really pretty here. And anyway, finally the wind calmed down. And I'm really looking forward to our trip. We're both excited about being here. But it's a really neat, neat, uh, neat campsite. And... Uh, Anyway, there's a couple of beaches, one down, but there's about three beaches we've already looked at. One of them had some big critter tracks on it, not sure what they were. I told Marsha that somebody had a dog in here, and could have been, could have been something else. But uh, anyway, tomorrow I'm going to try to do some fishing, see if I can't, see if I can't hang into some of these walleye that day is running around here There's supposed to be a lot of them and uh, it's just totally hadn't seen a soul since we 
touch down and set up camp. And then anyway, that's it's pretty neat. So uh, that's just showing you our camp here. I'm having a little a little uh, cocktail before dinner. <laughs> So I'll come back and talk to you after we eat. Bacon and tomato sandwiches. Marsha is fixing bacon and tomato sandwiches. And they're going to be delicious. Anyway, just sitting here underneath the tarp. It's kind of intermittently raining on and off. And, uh, Looking out at the lake, it's just so nice to be here. We've driven 25 and a half hours to get up here from North Carolina. And man, I'm enjoying it. Except it's really cold, or it's cold to us. It was 90 degrees of the day when we left. And I think today was about 55. 53 to 55 degrees. <clears throat> I don't know how much Celsius it is, but it was quite cool for us. out for a paddle on our first day we're spending two nights here let's not get too close to this point here those rocks run way out in the water Well, this is our second evening on uh, Mexican Hat Lake here. We just had a great dinner. It was uh, chicken and vegetables and uh, spicy peanut sauce. Uh, give a big shout out to Kevin Outdoors. We used his recipe, so thank you. And it was it was really good. And anyway, it's been a it's been a blustery day, fairly fairly cool. And the wind's been blowing most most of the day, but anyhow, it's it's calmed down here about dark. Or well, it's not that late, but it's uh, it's calmed down. The wind has anyhow, and hopefully it'll it won't be as cool as it was last night. <coughs> but we're having a great time up here. This is our first time to Woodland Caribou, of course, and. Uh, it's just it's beautiful and anyway we're hoping hoping to see some some wildlife before we get out of here but uh, so far all we've seen some I guess wolf tracks I'm not sure and moose tracks and some other assorted on these beaches here on Mexican hat where I mean I don't know it's hard to tell what they are there. It's rained in the last couple of days and so they're not very distinct. But uh, evidently there's a lot of wildlife around. And I'd really like to like to catch some fish, but so far I hadn't had any luck. But I may be using the wrong lure or something. But uh, anyway, we're we're happy. We're having a great time. We're spending our second night here on the Mexican Hat Lake in Woodland Caribou Park. And anyway, we've got, I'm not sure if it's full or almost full moon, but oh man, it is beautiful. We're just sitting around the campfire and drinking a little coffee here. We're fixing to put some on. It's so quiet up here, 
so quiet. Tomorrow we're going to head up to Glen Lake. We got three portages to start with. They're not not very much. Probably like 160 meters, 150 and 190. And then we're going to have a full day of paddling. And hopefully we'll get to spend a couple of nights either on Glen or the I think Optic is next. And uh, spend a couple of nights there. Alrighty, see you tomorrow. fish. You're going to flop him onto the rocks if you're not careful. Got it? Hold him up. Fish. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're headed out of Mexican hat. The leaves are starting to change. Very nice. Where do you want to go in at? Huh? Where do you want to go in at? We want to go on that one because that otherwise we'll have to step across. What about beyond? We can do that. The rocks are getting kind of shallow no. here. Let me turn it in between that little one and the big one. Okay, between right here. It's getting a little rocky. To the left. Here comes Cheryl on the portage from Mexican Hat into Glen. First one at the little waterfall, the 60 meter. take the paddles and small stuff first, then come back for the um, pack, then that way you kind of get a look at the trail. Okay, so this is the blaze for the portage trail.
the left up here when it tees. It's going to push us over into the rocks then. Here's what we got a portage around. It's actually from Glen to another part of Glen, but it's a nice little waterfall. See the rest of the lake down there. Here's the way the blaze is. We on the trees here pretty hard to see we had a little difficulty finding this one all right we got to carry our stuff down to the next put in Glen Lake, bottom of the little falls we portaged around, Cheryl's gone back for the food barrel, should be coming back any minute. Here he comes now. What have you got? I've got the refrigerator. This is the most important part of the strip. <laughs> the pantry, the whole kitchen. The pantry. Yes. Now. Well, we're just sitting here looking out on uh, Glen Lake. We started this morning down at Mexican Hat. We were camped there. And uh, anyway, we we portaged a couple of, couple of times and into Glen and uh, had a really good paddle. Except probably about halfway through the paddle, we started hitting a headwind. And it was a little bit bad, but it, anyway, we made it, and uh, so now we got us a pretty good campsite here. That's thank goodness it's out of the wind. The wind's still blowing. It's just it's been blowing most of the day, and it's starting to rain a little bit. But uh, beautiful lake. I caught a nice pike this morning. May fish just a little bit here in a few minutes. And uh, anyway, Marcia, she's reading a book. And it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful lake. It's bigger than I thought, but wow, it's really neat up here. So far, haven't seen one single person since, since the beaver plane dropped us off. This is our third day. We've been totally, totally alone. 
and uh, it's just it's just amazing to me. It's great, great country. So this is a it's an adventure for me and Marcia. We're really enjoying it. I think it's a pike, no? Another walleye. All right. We're gonna have a good dinner tonight. That's a nice little eating size walleye. This is the morning on Glen Lake. Rained all night last night. Anyway, loons. we're hearing loons. It's off foggy, and we're trying to make up our mind if we want to want to paddle or just take out take the day off because it's supposed to rain pretty good the rest of the day. But anyway, we'll we're gonna have some coffee and make a decision. Well, this lake is full of walleye and pike. I caught eight or ten last night and released them, but it was just fast. You could throw the hook in, you'd catch one. So I hate, kind of hate to leave so soon. Okay, we're gonna go up here and have some coffee, maybe if it's ready yet. We're having a great time. Having a great time. to the left and see if we can go around it or I don't think we can lift over. No, we're not Okay, so this is the Beaver Dam. <laughs> and here we go.
sabotage from Glan into Optic. Miranda Falls on the Rostow River. Still raining. And once again, here comes Cheryl with the food barrel. Okay, so this is the Austral River. And it's obviously still raining. Okay, this is the campsite on Optic Lake. Uh, kind of a raw day. It's still raining. Rained all last night. Rained all day while we paddled. We've set up camp, but we've used the fire ring back in the woods. That's a little more sheltered. Not quite so windy. more of our campsite on Optic Lake. Rain's finally stopped. Getting ready for dinner. It's our tarp and our fire pit. And our little tent. Cheryl's come down to get some water. And we'll walk down to the lake. Well, we're at our campsite on Optic Lake. Anyway, been raining all day. Finally, finally quit. Marsha's fixing dinner. And uh, this is our camp setup. We just uh, pulled some tarps up for because of the rain. And anyway, we're we're getting settled in for the night. It's a nice campsite here. Actually, it's out of the wind. We're right on the point in the lake and it's been blowing hard all day, cold, but but right here on top, I guess we're sheltered by the, by the trees behind us a little bit. But anyway, when you <clears throat> walk out here to the other camp, well, it's probably the same campsite. It's just, there's another fire pit down here and it's just really open to the wind very cold so we decided to camp up here in the woods here we got the full moon over optic lake with the caribou here on Optic Lake after rainy and windy yesterday we're uh, we're starting out towards the telescope man it's, it's a nice morning I'd like to give a shout out to an old Canadian tradition of leaving leaving some firewood for the next guy because it sure did save our butts yesterday we came in, it was pouring rain. And luckily, whoever camped here before us had left a, a small pile of firewood, but it was enough to get us going so we could find some more. So, thank you. We hopefully did left enough for the next guy. 
Poor Gale. Poor Gale. Nice to be t shirt weather again. for the second portage on telescope, is that right? Second portage, yeah. Around a little waterfall. Rocks coming up. There's a, a limb. Can't get past. It's a little 60 meter walk in the woods from part of telescope to another part above a little waterfall. And here we are. Okay, so we're on telescope light still. Looking for a campsite. And that'll be what, probably an island site? Well, I wanted to show y'all around our little island side out here on Telescope Lake. Anyway, we're, it's pretty windy out here, but uh, it's a really, really good looking little campsite. We finally got, we got set up here. And uh, anyway, everything was wet as it could be from the rain 
yesterday. So we're drying out, drying out tarps and clothes, whatever. And uh, wind has really, really been howling here. So maybe everything, hopefully everything will get dry, all our clothes and stuff. And uh, there's two or three fire pits here. I don't know which one we're going to use. We've got one over here by the by the close to the tent and the tarp. <coughs> but there's a real nice one out here that's but it's just it's facing the wind. The wind's really coming in here. This is a nice side. Real nice. I made just a little windbreak here with a canoe and a tarp. Anyway, that's been that's been pretty handy. I'll check you guys later. Real nice sunset here on Telescope Lake. <clears throat> anyway, we've got our and our fires out here on the big old rock. Somebody put a fire pit out here, so we came out here and built us a fire. Now if we turn kind of back to the right just a tad, that'll line us up with the channel. That's a little too much. Well, it's probably right now. Yeah, it probably is. Or is that it right there? No. We're looking for the portage at the end of the telescope lake. In the in the only. So far we haven't been able to. Haven't been able to find the river yet. Stream. So we'll keep looking here for a minute. It's a pretty long lake. What? So this is the little lake at the east end of the portage into telescope, right? for the portage. No blaze.
I think we're going around a little waterfall. A little rocky. There it is. Oni Lake. Well, here we are camping again. Early morning mist and the sunrise in Woodland Caribou. Here's Marsha cooking pancakes for breakfast and uh, we're having pancakes, bacon, and hash browns and eggs for breakfast. Now that's the only way to travel. Here go the eggs. leaving out early tomorrow morning so we're splurging on breakfast today and trying to eat everything everything that we can to make the pack a little bit lighter got a I don't know about 900 meters of portage in the morning to meet our pickup ride so we're just uh, just eating what food we can eat don't want anything left Here's Marsha packing up on our last morning in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. Packing the chairs up with her headlight on, blinding the camera. <laughs> oh, thank goodness it's a beautiful morning. No rain. I don't want to get soaked before I get in the, hopefully the truck will be there when we get to the access road. Hopefully coming up on the only Lake Portage Trail. Not real certain. I may be wrong. I'm thinking it's by that pink ribbon right there. You don't see that? Look at that green bush.
all right we're at the we're at the end of the portage from only lake to i don't know where the next little stream little river. little river and it's uh the mosquitoes are kind of vicious right here it's a pretty place though but anyway still still the uh, weather still holding it's still pretty nice day winds breeze is good and cool because we got sweaty on that one it's it's got a couple hills in it it's pretty tough we made it and uh, we're fixing to go on to got a little 30 meter i think and then another paddle and a 350 meter all right check we later left it's how many meter oh. Oh. This was the last little pond or river that we came to, came through from uh, from Oni, and we got out and here's the portage. It's only a 30 meter up to the next. We got one more pond to go, and then we'll then we'll be at the uh, Suffolk Lake or Oni Lake access, Suffolk Suffolk Lake Road and Oni Oni Lake access, and. We're supposed to meet the outfitter there at around 12 o'clock but uh, we got one more 350 meter portage after we get off of this small lake till we get to the uh, get to the road all right this is our last paddle before the portage to the road I hope it's not a... I was going to say, it could just be straight up the road. It probably is. <laughs> it is. It's just waiting. Oh, it, it's kind of nasty. We're just walking back out to Portage to Oni Lake Portage Trail just to get the rest of get the boat and food barrel and the pack and thought to, thought you guys might like to see this. got a nice boardwalk and part of it but most of it's just rough it looks like a bear had to take a little break here hope I remember that when I come back with a canoe on my head these portages up here they're a little bit gnarly and that's about it for the only lake to the road access trail we just got to get this stuff moved back out to the road and we're done this is the access road out here it's kind of in the middle of nowhere We've made it back to civilization, semi-civilization, Red Lake. <laughs> Damn backs 
some silver.